Don here in Florida, and I might have just made the biggest mistake of my life. I just bought the cheapest VFD on eBay. And I did this just to see if it would actually work. Honestly, the VFD for me is one of the greatest inventions ever. It allows you to, to go from single phase to three phase, use three phase motors, adjust the uh, frequency and allow the motor to, to run above and below its, its uh, rated uh, RPM to an extent. And uh, you know, it's just very comfortable and easy to use uh, piece of equipment for me. It, it, uh, it eliminates a lot of uh, extra electronic garbage that uh, just gets in the way when you're trying to um, hook up, especially three phase motors. So anyway, getting right down to it, uh, the cheapest VFD I could find, I found on eBay. And you're gonna ride along with me. We're gonna open this up. We're gonna uh, see how it works. And we're gonna hook it up and uh, try it out and see what happens. This is either gonna be passable crap or utter crap. Let's find out. Okay, it came packaged just like this uh, through the mail. It, it didn't have any other packaging. So, open it up here. Here's the uh, book. Here's the VFD in there. So, get that box out of the way. Get this packing off of here. Get that out of the way. Okay. All right. The uh, one thing I really notice about this right away is just the uh, build quality of it seems pretty chintzy, but uh, what do you expect? So I'm sure all the uh, wiring hookups are under here. These are obviously your main wire inputs here for your input and output. So uh, we'll double check that in the book here. So the uh, writing of this these uh, books from China is usually pretty crappy uh, let's just read this here for example it says uh, right here for selecting mode or programming mode it is available not matter the inverter start or stop press the key for modifying parameters okay so, I mean right there first sentence first page you know um, luckily I've done enough of these that I've pretty much figured out what they mean when they talk on here and a lot of this that you see on here we're not going to even need or use which you'll find out here in a second so the hook up on here this is a uh, AT1 so this is going to be the wiring hookup for it very straightforward if you're using externals an external start stop switch or an external potentiometer and stuff it does have, have hookups for all that as well and accessing those points uh, once you're hooked up is all done through uh, the programming so it, it is pretty easy once you learn this and uh, figure out how it works so let's uh, first off let's take this cover off here there we go get the cover off and uh, yeah there's your inputs your ground on one end that would be your 220N and these would be your three phase out so let's go over on the bench and see if we can about hooking this up okay so what we have here is a dayton three phase industrial motor and it's a one horsepower uh, 1725 rpm where is it on there right there okay and we're going to use the 208 to 230 volt hookup here so lines I'm hoping that's in focus four five and six will be locked together and then line seven and one will go to line one on your three phase line eight and two will go together on line two on your three phase nine and three will go together on line three on your three phase and if we look down here i've already pre-wired this here so uh these three here these are the three to go together these are uh four five and six so they're locked together. Of course, your green, this is your ground line going straight to chassis. So that's a no-brainer. Uh, you got line line in here. Uh, that would be, uh, let me read it here, 2 and 8. It's actually written right on here, T2, and then it says 8 on there. Same thing here. Same thing here. We got uh, 7 and 1. No, this is 7 and 1. 
and this is uh, nine and three, and it's written right on the wires. So you just put your, your lines one, two, and three on like that. That's your ground, and then lock these three together. That's all there is to wire in a three-phase. There's, there's really nothing to it. Okay, so uh, now we're going to wire to the VFD. Okay, so I have a, a 250 in line here. This is my green, of course, is your ground. That's your hot neutral. If you look on here, that's your line in neutral. So we're going to put line in here in the second one where it says line. Get that in there. And lock that down. And then your neutral goes right next to it here. Looks like I need to loosen it up just a little bit. Probably a little over a kill on this wire here, but this is just my test cord. So, and then we're going to bring over our three phase power in, and uh, it'll be. It really doesn't matter which order this goes in on the three phase side that's that's the nice thing about it if, if you find yourself in in reverse of where you want to go you just switch two of the lines around say the black and the red and that would get you going the opposite direction um, with these VFD here this one here anyway has a forward and reverse so it doesn't matter unless you specifically want forward one way on that line so and then your red goes in here. I like the way they, they put these screws down in a cage, so if you accidentally knock one out, you can never retrieve it without disassembling the whole thing or shaking it around for an hour. check these wires and then we're going to take our, our grounds and we're going to hook these together here so and this is just a temporary wiring this is just to test the BFD on the motor and then we'll later on we'll put it in the uh, we're going to use this on the saw we'll put it in the saw and uh, see how that goes Okay, I'll we'll make sure none of my wires are stranding out and touching in there, which is a big no-no. I use what's called LED wire or LED cable. It's it's a three strand. You can get it two, three, four strand, whatever you want. And it's real fine line. And you would use that to hook into here because you have reference voltages. You have a five reference and a, and a 12 volt reference. And then those reference voltages would allow different functions on here like an external switch uh, for forward and reverse for start stop things like that so i'm not even going to use those so they're not going to matter as far as the wiring we're actually all done now so now we got to go through the programming and i went ahead and marked out what's going to be important on the programming here in blue anything below this red line here unless you're using alternative inputs and outputs and you need to program them you don't need if you're going right off the panel up to that point is all you need and you don't need every single one of these parameters because some of them are already set for you like this one here your maximum voltage it's either 220 or 380 okay that's already set for you you don't have to worry about that so we would go straight to po1 uh the default setting for this is is 50 hertz we're, we're powered off 60 hertz, so we'll, we'll change that to 60 hertz. I don't really know what they mean by these intermediate voltages here. I guess these might be if you're using a, a stepper or something on it, you know, stepping up and down, um, like you would down here on the CNC stuff. Uh, I go right straight down here to maximum operating frequency, which will change from 65 to 90. The minimum operating frequency, I want it to start at 30 hertz, not zero. So we'll start that at 30. This is password stuff, that doesn't matter. Uh, we come over to here. 
Uh, braking time is already set to half a second, which for the saw might be a little low, but I'm just going to leave it there for now for testing. I can always come back and change it. Uh, brake voltage, all this here is fine. I don't care about that. Operating arrival, anytime I see 50 hertz, I'm going to change it to 60 hertz, so I'm going to change that. Over temperature is already set to max, so I'll leave that. Revolutions at 50 hertz, we're changing it to 60 hertz. That's about it. That's all I really need uh, for settings. So we've got one, two, three, four, five settings we're going to make. So let's do that right now. Okay, so she's on. It says our frequency is set at max at 65. We're going to back that down to zero. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to program, go to PO1, and it's set at 50. We're going to run this up to 60 hertz because that's what we're coming off of on the wall here. Come on. It must be a little bit difficult here. All right, I'm going to save that. Let's move all the way up to PO6 now. And we're going to program PO6. Uh, maximum operating, it's set at 65. We're going to run this up to 90. Actually, let's set it at 80 for now. I can come back just to speed this up. I'm just showing how this is set up. Okay, I'm going to save that. Goes on to PO7 which is uh, minimum operating. So we're gonna program that up to 30. Come on. Don't want to start at zero. That can get kind of hard on the inverter and the motor. And you really don't need anything below 30 for the most part, unless you got a really powerful motor and you're not pushing a lot. Nine. 30. Okay, we're going to save that. And that automatically goes to PO8. I need to jump up to uh, P18. So, P18, we're going to program that to 60 hertz. Come on. 59, 60. Okay, we're going to save that. Okay, so now we're all programmed. I, this allows us to go from 30 to, I set it at 80, I can change it back to 90 if I want. So let's go ahead and uh, see if this runs. We're in uh, forward here. So we're gonna go ahead and hit run. And there she goes. Change the camera angle here so you can see the motor. Okay, so. Go ahead and see how she speeds up here. Okay, there's 60 hertz right there. That's normal operating speed of 1725. Okay. Woo she gets a little shaky getting up there. may have to get in there and, and uh, clean that. She's humming right along there at 80. She likes 60. Let's see what she does when I hit stop. Okay, nice clean stop. Okay, we're going to change it to reverse and run it. Yeah, she goes in the reverse direction. And she runs right up to 60 because that's where we had it preset. And now let's say I was running my bandsaw here and I was cutting, say, real mild steel and I wanted to cut something a little bit harder, I could just turn this down. Same thing on your lathe if you want to turn down your spindle speed. And I don't like dropping it below 30.
see if she'll do a forward reverse on the roll here. Oh yeah, just like that. Which might be dangerous on a saw. <laughs> She runs real smooth at 60. That's nice. I'll probably set this up to 90. See if she does does a change of speed at 30 for us without binding up. Oh yeah, there she goes. Let's do a clean stop from 60. And a restart. Okay, so we got our uh, VFD all hooked up and going. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get everything mounted up on the uh, Delta bandsaw, and then we're going to really put it to the test, see if she can handle uh, working under a load. So uh, let's go get that done and see how it goes. Okay, so putting this together was pretty easy. I just took a piece of uh, three-quarter by half-inch bar stock, and I cut it to uh, dimension, and that would have been uh, 0.371 by uh, 0 0.590 and I think the total length on this and this isn't really super important uh, 2.8 this piece here where it mates into this notice it's offset of the cam wheels and that's because this piece here where it comes through if you look carefully it comes out actually forward of the blade so those cam wheels to have them centered our offset on that pad. So when this goes in, then it's going to be offset like this. And that's what's going to allow us to adjust in and out on the wheels. The wheels themselves, or the cams and the wheels, I simply took a piece of one inch round stock and I turned a hub on it so that the cam wheel can sit down on there like this and then just a number 10 with a washer behind it holds it in place okay and then it just goes on like this and it will cam over on the screw and notice the screws are inset so and that does lock on there really good once it seats so don't tighten it up till you've got it in place. And see, notice that it cams over like this. And this is what allows us to adjust into the blade. There we go. Okay, and then to get it adjusted, you can move it in and out like this. Okay, I haven't made up an adjusting screw yet, so I'm just using this bolt right here to uh, lock it where I want it. So right there is where I want it for right now and then you can lock the depth in place like this and then you can rotate or cam over your bearings like this to where you're just starting to make contact and tighten them one and two right there so now we have a perfectly viable guide just barely touching same thing back here just barely touching okay so we got our motor all hooked up 
and belt it up and our VFD on there so starting the VFD off on 30 Hertz just to start it okay and I've been over here cutting up a little bit of aluminum just to see what she'll do and it seems to be running really well off the VFD so one thing I did want to point out is notice that the belt is running backwards it's running counterclockwise while the drive shaft is running clockwise and that's because we we took that other gear out of there that would have turned it the other direction we're driving it directly with the belt inside it's nice and quiet nice and quiet I'm real happy with that so I've I've got this uh, surface feet per minute tachometer here and when I put it on right there we're running at about uh, 218 surface feet per minute and I've got it set on the second uh, pulley setting uh, this is actually a good setting right now if I bring it up to uh, 60 Hertz it comes up to uh, a little over 300 and as we go up it goes up to 400 and it ends at 400 on the second belt setting if I go to the third belt setting then I can get it up to about 500 on the first belt setting it's actually ideal for steel so we're gonna cut some aluminum here real quick just to show you how well this works okay right through it like butter now I've only been practicing with uh, aluminum here but I want to try some mild steel so okay so starting it on the first belt setting at 30 Hertz she's turning pretty slow right here and with the tack on here we're turning about 90 surface feet per minute okay we're starting at 30 Hertz at about 90 surface feet per minute and as we bring it up okay at uh, 50 Hertz we're at 106 150 bringing it up bringing it up bringing it up at 60 Hertz we're at 200 surface feet per minute so I'm going to drop this down just a little bit and we're going to cut it at uh, just cut it at 150 this is 150 surface feet per minute and let's see how this does Okay, it went through there real nice. So let's rebelt it and try some wood. Okay, so when I rebelt it, I have to pull out this lever here so I can disengage the reduction box here. And I have to change the direction of the VFD to forward. So now we're, we're moving the motor forward. And when I run the tack on this at 30 hertz, it's only 870 surface feet per minute. I don't know how fast wood is supposed to go, but I know it's an, I'm pretty sure it's an awful lot faster than that. I don't do much woodwork. And when I turn this up to, we turn up to 50 hertz, and she's shaking around a little bit. I put some feet on it, and, okay, there's 50 hertz. I put some feet on it, and at 50 hertz, it's at uh, just shy of 1,500 surface feet per minute. So, I think that's probably plenty. And I've got this uh, plank here that I was fooling around with, so we'll try this. And that chomps that out like nothing. A couple things I, I did on this I, I knocked out this aluminum 
uh, plate here. I'm going to make a stainless one and put a stainless in here instead. I, I don't really like that. I mean, it's okay, but I'm going to put some stainless in here. The uh, VFD, uh, even under load, seems to be working just fine. So I'm pretty happy about that. Covers, I am I like this all open, but I probably am thinking of making a, a latex or an acrylic cover for this, just so I can see the wheels. I've, I've got the tin work over there. I just I think it looks nice out in the open like this. So I don't know, we'll see. Yeah, this just continues to be a uh, work in progress, but I think that's about it. All that I'm gonna show on this, I have to move on to other things, so. Um, okay, so I guess that's just about it. This video was to s determine whether the cheapest VFD on eBay could do what it's supposed to do, and that was drive this one horsepower saw. This is a one horsepower VFD, one horsepower motor. Um, obviously it works. Works bo both in forward and reverse, works through the uh, frequencies, so I should be happy. <clears throat> what y'all didn't see was this. I bought two VFDs, two of the cheapest VFDs you could get. I bought them in a pair because I'm actually doing another saw just like this on the side as well. And this VFD, I was working up, I was testing it on the motor uh, just to make sure I knew all the parameters and how to, to program everything with this particular VFD before I actually filmed it. On the fourth start, this one went blam and blew out and it's no good. This is junk luckily i had this second vfd and this is the one that we've been uh, working on throughout the video i contacted the vendor the vendor is a little bit slow about getting back to me but he did tell me that he has another vfd on its way uh, he sent me a tracking number this morning so hopefully the third cheap vfd that i'm getting as replacement for this one uh, will work out fine as well um, we'll let you know further on down the road uh, this saw I'm going to put into service. I have obviously some, you know, small touch-up things that I have to do still that you're not going to see on video. Uh, but I am going to be, be using this saw. And so if you keep on watching, you will find out about any updates on this VFD, whether or not it holds up. So with that, I guess that's about it. The heat and humidity out here today are just horrendous. So uh, we're going to wrap this up. Uh, thanks for watching. And as always, from Florida, Don out.